Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepzani. Here are your top stories this Wednesday. In America, President Barack Obama won the vote to stay for another term, defeating Republican Mitt Romney. Obama is the second Democrat to win a second four-year White House term since World War II. The first black president faced a number of challenges as the country was hit by a devastating storm, but electrical votes put him back on top. President Obama prevailed despite the disappointing figures of the U.S. economy and a well-spoken challenger, former, former Governor Mitch Romney. Social media sites were bombarded this morning as a number of Africans congratulated Barack Obama for his re-election to run for another four years as the American president. In his speech, the president told the American people that the best is yet to come. In Zimbabwe, a man has been sentenced to death by hanging for decapitating his brother. The suspect had had, had an argument about home chores when the incident happened. He then savagely decapitated his brother, wrapped his body in a tarpaulin and buried it in the woods. Prosecutor Kumbalan Ndlovu told the court that an argument took place between the two brothers last year on April 26 after Nkosiabo missed a groundnut harvest. The court heard that 31-year-old Temetani was struck in the head with an axe while sleeping by his younger brother, 26-year-old Nkosiabo of Matebeleland. Nkosibani was examined by a psychiatrist who found that he was sound of mind. Justice Lawrence Komacha of Bulawayo High Court found no excuse for his actions in this case and sentenced him to death by hanging on Tuesday. Zambia has strengthened its push to relaunch the national airline in order to help boost the tourism industry in the line with new government laws. Prospective investors have been invited for a discussion at the Zambian High Commission in London on Saturday with the aim to leasing an aircraft. David Perry, the Deputy Minister of Tourism and Arts, will be leading the Zambian delegation at the 2012 World Tourism Market in London. In a media statement issued by the press secretary, Minister Perry said that for the country to get its desired position in tourism, a national airline is very important, adding that the president Sata is keen on this idea. Luke Tamboronyoka, the spokesman for Zimbabwe Prime Minister Morgan Changarai, has regained consciousness according to the Prime Minister's office. Tamboronyoka was involved in a near-to-death accident as his car overturned. The Minister of State in the Prime Minister's office, Jameson Timba, confirmed that Tamboronyoka is conscious but still unable to speak, although he can smile and recognize people around him. Tamboronyoka sustained a number of injuries as a rear tire of his car burst, causing the vehicle to roll three times. He was on his way to his rural home in Damboshova. Now here's Liam with a special feature on the rise of Zimbabwe's tourism industry. Thank you, Charity. Now in today's special feature, we thought we'd take a little look at the Zimbabwe tourism industry. Now what's prompted this discussion is a leading story in the UK national paper, The Guardian, where the, in the travel section, where they talk about Zimbabwe returning once again to becoming a tourist destination. Now, in the article, the explorer, as he's known, is Kevin Rushby, he's the journalist, and he goes to visit Zimbabwe and explore why, once again, the tourist industry is starting to be interested in Zimbabwe after years of basically no tourists at all. So he goes on a safari trip to Hwange and takes in all the typical sites you'd expect to see, seeing the animals, lions, and all the stuff like that. But interestingly, he also explores the cities. Bulawayo, for example, has a great new pub crawl that he decides to go on. And he comes to the conclusion that this is a country that really is starting to attract tourists again. Interestingly, he speaks to the local people, and of course, they are absolutely desperate for tourists to come to this, industry, to come to this country. So, well, I mean, whether that's in the rural areas where, you know, gamekeepers, safari tours, they are completely reliant on these tourists coming from an international base. Or if it's the cities, like we discussed, people in Bulawayo, people in Harare, who need to sell their goods, and who better to sell to than tourists? 
he continues to sell the, in the second city of Bulawayo. It's been really difficult for shopkeepers, for pub owners, but they're starting to slow in drips and drabs. People are coming in and they're really starting to be interested in visiting this country once again and everything that it has to offer. It's a big, big deal for it to be in a big paper in the UK, The Guardian, and he's a, you know, Kevin Rushby is an experienced journalist, so for him to explore in depth reasons A, why the tourism industry failed in Zimbabwe and the, the finance difficulties that happened, but the positive nature of why people are coming back and what that means for the economy. Now, we were really interested to hear from you guys in Zimbabwe, the people who are directly affected by a boost in the tourism industry. And I'm delighted to say that joining us on the line is Kelvin Chikikai, who is an entrepreneur from Harare. And basically, Kelvin, we want to know how healthy is the tourism scene in Zimbabwe at the moment? Currently, I cannot say there is a healthy tourism uh, situation in Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, like recently, there was uh, they were having a uh, it was more of a tourism campaign that they were having, and they were moving around educating people on on tourism here in Zimbabwe. So it seems like things are going to be better soon. Obviously, Calvin, you're a proud Zimbabwean. But for somebody maybe who didn't know too much about the country, what has it got to offer to tourists? And I believe it's, uh, it's the greatest in Africa. That's what I believe in. And uh, it is the best tourist uh, destination in the whole of Africa. Because like what I'm talking about, we have Victoria Falls. No other country in Zimbabwe in, in the whole of Africa has got Victoria Falls. Right? These are the greatest falls in the in the world, right? We also have uh, Kariba, the Kariba Dam. Now, it's also mentioned in the Guardian article that the fact that there is now a power-sharing government in Zimbabwe has led many people to think that it's a safer country to visit and hence more tourists coming in. How much do you agree with that? Um, the thing now, all the political principles, they are encouraging peace in Zimbabwe. That's the great thing about it. They are all uniting. You see, they are encouraging us to be united. And another thing, you will find uh, at one point, Shankara used God to say, "You people down there, stop fighting against each other, because as you are fighting, at that time you are fighting. I will be seated with Mugabe, drinking tea together. You see, yep. it's an act that our leaders are united up there. So down here, we don't have to come against each other. So it's a great thing that uh, the GPA." has brought uh, a difference, especially in the tourist, tourism industry. You know, there is peace everywhere. No more fighting, no more civil wars. So it's quite a great destination, I should say. Well, Kelvin, thanks very much for joining us to discuss this issue. That's Kelvin Chikakai, an entrepreneur from Harare. Now, I'm pleased to say, to discuss this further with me in the studio is my colleague, Michael. Thanks for joining us. No, thank you. So we're talking about tourism. The industry is picking up. How healthy do you think it is right now? Well, it is uh, looking very healthy at the moment. Uh, going by what the uh, Minister of Tourism, uh, Ward Mzemba, said, who is actually in London for the World Tourism Day. Uh, for, inst for instance, he gave out figures for 2011. There were about 2.5 million visitors who came into the country, generating a revenue of uh, just under a billion. Now, just picking up on what Kelvin said on the phone there, he was talking about what Zimbabwe has to offer. Victoria Falls was something that you pointed out, and this is what we've got here. How big an attraction is that for people to visit? Well, Victoria Falls is one of the seven wonders of the world. I don't know if there are eight now, <laughs> but it is one of definitely a top tourist uh, attraction. As you can see, there's loads of waterfalls, just uh, nature at its best. And there are also various places that you can go to. Zimbabwe, for example, Chinoy Caves, you've got uh, the Great Zimbabwe Ruins, so many different places. Now, many people have talked about, in, on the tourism industry, the, the obvious things that you think about when visiting Africa, wildlife, safari, but interestingly, in the Guardian's paper today, the English newspaper, they talked about what the cities have to offer. The journalists they talked about the pub crawl in Bulawayo, for, just for an example. Now, I know you spend time in cities in Zimbabwe. What do they have to offer for people from outside the country? Well, people from outside can expect a warm, uh, friendly environment where you've got uh, genuine 
people who smile at you when they walk by, unlike, for example, in Europe where almost everyone is crossed and people are just speeding by. Uh, you also get that, uh, uh, it's, it's a totally different environment uh, and, and uh, such offers you different activities as well. So would you recommend to a prospective visitor to make sure you take in city life and rural life as well? Yes, I would. I would definitely, uh, for anyone who goes obviously to the country who first and foremost pass through the cities in order to get to whichever tourist destination they want to go into. And it, it won't be a truly Zimbabwean experience if you don't get to see both sides. And finally, Michael, whether it's rural, village or city, I mean, how important is it for the whole economy of the country that this rise in tourism is happening? It is very important. As, uh, you, as we all know, the, at the moment Zimbabwe is not exporting much and therefore there they isn't that much source of foreign currency. But at the end of the day, you still have to get things like fuel into the country. You still, because we don't generate enough electricity for the whole country, you still have to import also stuff like electricity, some basic essentials, because the manufacturing industry is down. Therefore, you definitely need that injection of foreign capital. Well, it started, it's a slow start, but it's really starting to build back up now. We're going to keep abreast of the whole situation in Zimbabwe and I'm sure we'll have more features on tourism in the region as we get it. So for now, it's back to you, Charity. And today's photo of the day has been awarded to Aya Sids, who looks like he's having a great time with his friends. Keep sending us your photos at our ATV Facebook page and you could appear on the big screen. Thank you for watching ATV News and have a good evening.